Welcome back to the program, everyone. On this Saturday morning, I'm your host, Randall White, and we talk food, wine, craft beer, travel, tourism, and the like at this time every morning. You know, a highly publicized study, if you watched any news at all this week, uh, you heard about it, funded by the National Institutes of Health, came out this week in the Journal of the American Medical Association saying that dieters who were trying to maintain a weight loss program burned and in this study, significantly more calories eating a low-carb diet than they did eating a low-fat diet and, to some degree, a Mediterranean diet. Now, the study was rather small with just 21 subjects who were fed diets that had the same number of calories, but the fat, protein, and carbohydrate content varied with each subject. Those on the low-carb version burned roughly 300 additional calories per day compared to those on the low-fat diet and about 150 calories per day compared to those on the Mediterranean or the uh, low-glycemic index diet. Uh, Joining us now to discuss these findings is Dr. Susan Swadner with the Food Science and Nutrition Department at Cal Poly, of which I'm an alum, (laughs) in studio this morning. Great to have you with us, doctor. And also on the line is Dr. George Bray with the Pennington Biomedical Research Center and author of the response to the low-carb study in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Welcome to the program, Dr. Bray. Good morning, and thank you. Glad to be here. Oh, fantastic. I, I think you're up in the Bay Area right now, aren't you? Uh, that's correct. Yeah. We're in the East Bay. <laughs> well, welcome to California, and welcome both of you to the program. Now, Dr. Bray, I'll start with you. Can you sum up for us that journal response that you wrote? Yes. Yeah, so you, you have two issues when you have a, a, a small study. Uh, one is duration. And the important thing for most individuals who are interested in diets isn't what happens in the first two, three, or four weeks, but what happens at two, three, four, six, or more months. Uh And Although there are small differences between these three groups in a a beautifully designed study, and I take my hat off to Dr. Ludwig and and Dr. Ebeling, they did a very nice job with the design and execution, but they they had, by nature, a short study and projecting that out for the long period, we don't really find much difference between one diet or another. It's whether you stick to the diet. And and adherence is really the major issue in getting the best out of your diet, not what the composition of that diet is. So many people, Dr. Bray, when they get started on a diet, myself included, want to see rapid results in the beginning just to get them going. So in that aspect of it, uh, it sounds like, the low, according to the study, the low-carbohydrate uh, version of the diet does give you that like initial sort of boom to your diet. If, if whatever diet you adhere to well uh, will give you the best effect. And when I see patients, my uh, first question is them if when they want a diet is, what's going to work best for you? And if Low-carbohydrate diets are fine. Mediterranean diets are fine. Low-fat diets are fine. They all work well. We'd done a study published two years ago looking at high and low protein and high and low fat over two years rather than uh, four weeks. And, and in that setting, the prescription of one of those others, and they included the range of proteins in this study, didn't make any difference. So oh. I, I agree with you. If you get Whatever will get you started And what you want to stay to is what you need to do. And if it's low-carbohydrate, that's fine. If it's low-fat, that's fine, too. Now, low-carbohydrate may give you that initial boost, but Dr. Swadner, is it the healthiest way to go about losing weight? I guess I have a concern, too. I'm going to have you just talk a little more into the mic. Oh, thanks. thanks. Sure. They get a little extreme, and they'll go very low-carb. And we now have an RDA of 130 grams of carbohydrate a day for the brain to function and people get into ketosis and they lose their appetite so that helps them but i actually have patients too a lot of times go i want to go gluten-free because that's the only way to lose weight so they also go with the protein and i really agree with dr bray well i have to what incredible expert i look up to all the research that he does and i feel honored to be on the show with him today but i also have a private practice and i find with my patients a lot of times i'm like a coach their willingness to come in and see me, put the effort, the time in it, get the physical activity part. And what I like to do is work with a patient is see what their regular habits are, fine-tune them so they do get a healthy, balanced diet, but find out what time do they get up, when do they go to work, how many children do they have, what is their lifestyle, and then design a plan around what their life is about. 
And would you agree with Dr. Bray that this is a long term thing? This is not, this is not the first few weeks or the month or what have you. Yeah, and I think what happens is I have patients that lost hundreds of pounds on and off. They go on a lot of di- certain diets. Let's say they go on a low carb diet. They can't deal with it. Then they binge on carbs. They gain the weight back. They give up. Then they find another diet or a diet book, and they lose the weight. Then they gain it back. But basically, it's making a lifestyle plan, and I sort of make it your food plan. And also, I change it with the clients. If their lifestyle changes, they don't like this, we we change it. So you can't really um, fail on it because you just change it for what happens with the person and diet the word diet doesn't mean restrictive diet it means what you eat every day yeah the word diet is a big it's a big word and uh, people use it in different ways but uh, maybe lifestyle should be supplemented in uh, some cases for that word dr bray uh dr swadener here was just mentioning people who yo-yo dieting diet and i know that you are one of the uh premier experts in the nation when it comes to obesity. How dangerous is yo-yo dieting on a person's body? Well, you, you would obviously be better off not to regain the weight you've lost, and, and maintaining that loss um, is a key uh, question of, for all of us and how you can maintain that. Um, uh, we don't have any great successes, so unfortunately, lots of people do lose and then regain. But I'd rather have them lose than uh, not have gone through the loss because they get the benefits of the lower weight for whatever period they stay there. Right. And, and my, one of the questions I've raised with some of my experts over the years is that if their new diet, which comes out almost every year, had a magic formula in it that allowed people to lose and maintain weight loss, there wouldn't be any market for the next ones. Right. It, it's become a cottage industry, hasn't it? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, more than cottage, it's pretty big time. It's a, yeah, I should say, <laughs> you're right. I should say it's become become a mainstream industry, uh, losing weight in the United States because we have a large portion of the United States that falls into the obese uh, category. It, what it, where do you transfer from being just overweight to obese? What's the general percentage of weight over where you should be? Dr. Bray? Oh, yeah. The, uh, the current criteria are, are something called a body mass index, which is your height, uh, weight divided, height divided, weight divided by height squared, uh, which is a kind of complex number, but uh, for someone of my height, which is 5'10", the upper limits of normal weight would be about 175 pounds. That's a BMI of 25. I'm 5'10", and I've got some losing to do. <laughs> well, you got to the next, the next cut point is a BMI of 30, which is the line that demarcates obesity. And if you're, you're 5'10", and you're over 210 pounds, then you're in the obese category. Okay, I'm safe uh, for now, at least in the, in the window that you gave us, Dr. Bray. Uh, Dr. Swadener, I've heard uh, for years, at, even when I was studying at Cal Poly in the late 80s, that uh, calories in minus calories expended by your body is the only equation you need to know when it comes to losing weight. And uh, you can massage all these different diets and numbers any way you want, but unless you restrict the number of calories and increase the amount of calories you expend, you're not going to lose weight. I think that's true. And then you also, I see patients where I have to increase their calories because they're deficiting themselves so much that they're decreasing their metabolism. Oh. So that's what you have to be careful. I had someone who actually was restricting because she had anorexia nervosa and she was doing 700 calories a day. And she actually had her, um, her basal metabolic rate measured and it went down from 1,500 calories to 700. Wow. So she was actually gaining weight on 1,200. So sometimes you have to see, look at their metabolic rate. But that is true. But when you look at the, you see a young girl at 17 gaining weight or not losing at 1,200, but she was knocking down her energy expenditure to a thousand a day right well what a pleasure to have both of you on the show with us today i wish the segment was longer dr susan swadener from uh, cal poly the food science and nutrition program there and dr george bray with pennington biomedical research center uh happening to be in california right now up in the bay area thank you dr bray for being on the show Pleasure to be with you. As well as you, Dr. Swadner. All the information we talked about today is online at eatdrinkexplore.com. Just click on today's program summaries. When we return, we're going to talk about soda cans that cool themselves. I'm not kidding. Some 30 degrees after they're opened. We're back in a moment. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is